about Caligula is that uh, the stories that are told about him are probably the most extraordinary stories that are told of any Roman emperor. I mean, you know, even Nero didn't quite kind of come up to the Caligula level in uh, in Roman storytelling. You know, so you know, the famous things that you know get through into Robert Graves. You know, the way that he was going to make his horse a consul, senior magistrate of Rome. Um, the way he was going to build a bridge between his palace on the Palatine in Rome and the Temple of Jupiter on the Capitoline because he somehow wanted to show that, that, that religious power and secular power were united. Uh, now, there are all kinds of, you know, as always with these Roman emperors, there are all kinds of ways of thinking about this. Now, some people try and, and you know, rehabilitate him. You know, they say, look, this is all a terrible mistake. You know, Caligula has been deeply misrepresented. And you know, he's often, in that kind of mode, he's often looked as a kind of King Canute character. You know, King Canute, you know, a noble English king who wants to show his followers that he cannot control the tides. So he goes down to the sea, puts his throne there, and his feet get wet. That was the point. Nevertheless, he's gone down in popular culture as that silly old bloke who, who thought he could tell the waves to get lost, but he still got wet. Now, some people try and kind of do a King Canute line with Caligula. They say, look, uh, when he said he would make his horse consul, what he was doing, he wasn't really doing that, he was kind of showing up the sort of ridiculous, empty pretension of the imperial court. So empty that my horse could be consul. So, so you've got one line which says, look, Caligula wasn't so bad. Uh, and all these things that get told about him as being awful, many of them are somehow part of his attempt to make a point that was simply misunderstood. Mm -hmm.